Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to let you know about some of our other podcasts. Big focus this week is on the amazing world of radio. If you enjoyed the Christmas programs we brought you here, or even if you'd like something a little bit different for Christmas, I'd encourage you to check out The Amazing World of Radio at amazing.greatdetectives.net, where our Christmas series will be posted uh, with four episodes of different programs. Three, I think, are pretty obscure to most uh, listeners. Uh, and uh, you can uh, listen to our Christmas episodes there at amazing.greatdetectives.net and also check out all of our past series, including Summer of uh, Bogart, uh, Summer of uh, Angela Lansbury, as well as great movies over radio. Uh, so uh, I do encourage you to go ahead and check that one out. Also, we have our World War II podcast, thewar.greatdetectives.net, and the video version of this podcast at videotheater.greatdetectives.net. And then we have uh, the Classy Comics podcast at classycomicsguy.com. Well, now it's time for today's episode of It's a Crime, Mr. Collins, the original air date, April the 8th, 1957, and the title is Death War Green. It's a crime, Mr. Collins. It surely is. After all, what would you do if you met a group of handsome men who were dressed to kill? And then they did. Even when you're married to a private detective, that doesn't mean you're shockproof. Well, this is Dale Collins talking, and I'll be back in a minute to set the stage for our puzzling crime. It's a crime, Mr. Collins. Hello, Jack. All right, Gail, go ahead. What was this adventure called? I call it Death War Green. Mm, okay, carry on. Scare the daylights out of me. We'd gone east to New York. We figured it'd be a peaceful visit. We had relatives in Long Island and Westchester. We were going to stay at the Waldorf, give the town its annual coating of red, then hire a car and gallivant around shaking hands with long-lost cousins and aunts. While Greg and I were having Sunday dinner at the Sunken Plaza in Radio City, a young man, accompanied by a lovely girl in a green ensemble, strolled into a nearby newspaper shop. What paper do you want, honey? Oh, I don't care. Times, Tribune. I'll take the look. Times and Tribune. Uh, 25 cents. Uh, uh, here. Thank you. Uh, here's your change. Right. You're a little short on the change you gave me. Uh, how much do I owe you? $150,000. Uh, I thought so. The other one, sir. She's dressed in green, isn't she? And, uh, it's 8.15, isn't it? I gave you the right figure, didn't I? Okay. Here it is. In this envelope. I'll take it. Come on. Let's get out of here. Wait. Look outside. See those four guys standing on the sidewalk? Yes. All rolled up in their Sunday best. But they're not just out for a Sunday stroll. They're waiting for us. Well, we just have to risk it. Keep your hand on your gun. Start walking. No. You stay here. One of us has got to get through. I'll go up. Well, if anything happens to me, you duck through the back door. I don't want any shooting. My star. Shut up. Okay, Elizabeth. Here I go. Take a hand 
about an hour after the girl in green and her boyfriend exchanged bullets with four men outside the newspaper shop, Greg and I were in the same store. Do we have to buy souvenirs, chum? Nobody will forgive us if we don't. But why buy them here in New York and have to tour them all the way to San Francisco? Because my relatives would want a beautiful souvenir of New York, that's why. Oh, here's something cute. A portable radio in the shape of the Empire State Building. How much is it? Fifty-three dollars. What? Well, for a few bucks more, I could buy the building. Now, look, pal, we have to buy so many of these things. Wouldn't it be cheaper to bring all your relatives over here? Don't be sarcastic about my relatives, Greg. It's very commonplace. Look, why don't we buy them something after we get to San Francisco? They'll never know the difference. Come on, Gail. I saw a motorcycle cop outside, and I might get a ticket. You're just stalling because this stuff is expensive. They're rough around here, you know. A friend of mine was in town only two hours, got six parking tickets. He didn't even have a car. All right, very funny. Oh, let's go. Well, there's the car and no ticket. Well, let me... Who's this girl in green? You know her? No, ma'am. She's coming straight over to you. Please, kiss me. What? What did she say? You saved my life. Kiss me, cover me up. She, she, she w- 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 wants me to kiss her. Oh, that's what I thought she said. Greg Collins, don't you... I'll be her. killed. Oh, put your arms around me so no one can see my face. Kiss me. All right, ma'am. Why are you both? Oh, darling. Oh. 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 Come on, oh. get out of that pinch before oh. the referee gets mad. Oh, where have you been, Angel? It's so good to see you. No. Oh. It's been so long. Mm. Did you miss me? Mm. Look, lady, this man just happened to be my husband, Anna. I do not find this mm. under a mistletoe act very entertaining. Be quiet, girl. I'm saving the girl's life. Oh, very mm. courageous of you, darling. Mm. I don't know how you make these sacrifices. <sighs> Had enough, man? Uh, want to explain this now? Oh, those men on the corner. Four of them. Did he walk by? Yes, they did. Oh, good. Not it's so dark. If you hadn't kissed me and covered me up, I'd be dead now. I'm not sure it wouldn't have been better that way. You've got to help me get away from them. They're gangsters. We can't stay here. Take me in your car. Take me away. You've got to believe me. Hop in. Hey, Greg, wait a minute. Don't try to argue now, Gail. Come on. Well, okay. They have a car down the block. They're getting into it. One of those pretty hours. Look. She's right, Greg. They're coming after us. We'll play tag with them. Careful. Don't do anything that will attract police. Well, why not? What, well, when we have a minute to spare, I'll tell you. Just shake off that other car. I will if I can. I'll head down Lexington. Behind. I can't open up with a jalopy. It's crowded here. I'll try Park Avenue. We haven't lost them yet. The ramp. If I go over the ramp, there's a tunnel at the other end. I have an idea. The light's red, Greg. I'll go foot. No car cars around. They will do the light, too. On these turns, they won't see us for a few seconds. There's a tunnel at the south end. It's closed at night. Locked up. They'll think we turned and went down park. But we'll go through the tunnel in a second. There it is. I was right. Greg, they've put up a wooden fence for those red lanterns. They always do. Hold on to your hat. We're going right through. And that's just what we did. Went right through everything, fence, lanterns, and all. But keep your ears pinned, friends. We'll be back in a minute with more of our story. Well, after we got through the tunnel, Greg made for a small side street and pulled up. I think we've lost them. Now, what's this all about? My name's Elizabeth Pearson. Those men following us, the gangsters, they wanted this in my pocketbook, this envelope. Look at it. 
Oh, what's in it, Greg? Lunch money. Looks like quite a few thousand dollars. Uh, lunch for Lady Docker, that is. I uh, suppose you start talking, Miss Pearson. I'm, well, uh, I'm what you might call a, well, an underground group. We help refugee children, children who are ill, without parents, starving. We help them in Korea, then in Indochina, throughout Asia. What do you mean, underground? Well, ours is an organization that has no use for politics, for the rules, you might say. We work in any country, every country, all over the world. We don't wait for treaties, for permission. We wait for nothing. Well, I think that's wonderful. We work in countries where no one even knows we have agents. Just to help the babies and the little children, we, we cross borders. We'll do anything. And what's with the money? Well, that's money we've raised to go overseas. It was taken out of the bank this morning. Some gangsters found out I had it. I can't, for obvious reasons, go to the police. Our organization couldn't afford to have an exposure. You'd come from one of the European countries? No, no, I'm a native New Yorker. I've lived here all my life. Well, what are you supposed to do with all this cash? I have to get to the Walmart Inn on the Sawmill River Parkway to give this money to someone. He's, uh, he's from Europe. He has to use the money for us overseas. Well, what time do you do at the inn? At 10.30. I mustn't fail. He's got to get this money tonight. That's why I'm dressed in green. He has to watch for a girl in green... And then he's to give the password. Well, what's the password? He'll be singing Old Lang Syne. Are you kidding? No. It sounds queer, I admit, but that's the way it was told to me. Those men who are after you, are they gangsters who got wise and want to steal the money? Yes, but they mustn't get their hands on it. Come on. Where are you going, Greg? Get out of the car. We were here for a while. We got a chance on foot. They must be cruising around the neighborhood looking for this car. If we lay low for a while somewhere, they might get discouraged and give up. Come on, all out. Uh, wait till I see you down the street. Look, down by that lamppost. There they are. Greg, if we duck toward Madison and, and head to Grand Central Station. Yes, Gail, it's a good idea. Follow me. Keep close to the building. This way. Walk faster. Faster. The crowd's thick across the street. Let's head for it. I've seen it. Oh, she's right. Greg, they, they're coming after us. Where do we go? In here. The news rail thin? Right. Go through the turnstile. Three, please. Duck in here, Gail. Elizabeth. There's three seats. Rub your face with your hand and jump in the seat. English doors come into the theater, Greg? We'll US find out soon enough. Mr. Mr. Carlin. Yes, Elizabeth. Those two men who just came in. I can't see behind his post very well. Isn't that two of them? I'll slide over and have a look. They're coming down the aisle. They've got to go. Now, slide out this way, toward the fire exit. They saw us, Greg. They come. Go here, the fire exit. Now, open the door. All out. Yes, Greg. Okay, good. out here. Which way is the street? Ah, don't be foolish. It'll be suicide to go toward the street. Two of them are in the theater. The other two must be waiting outside. This, this fire stairway. We'll go up. Up? Certainly. See what we find on the roof. Think we can cross over to another building? I think so. These buildings are very close. There's the roof. Let's see. Mr. Collins, that messenger at the Walnut Inn. He won't wait forever. We've got to reach him. Give him the money. We'll reach him. There's a door leading into that other building. Let's try it. Greg, it's a, kind of amazing. Quite a crowd. A 
Welcome to the Homemakers Club. Are you guest speaker? Well, I... Uh... You must be Miss Rivette, the gardening expert. Uh, come right up to the platform. Oh, but uh, Jesus. I... Uh... And you brought two friends. How delightful. Why don't you two sit down here in the audience? There are two chairs. Uh, uh, thanks, oh, but... We, uh... Come on, Miss Rivette. We're so happy to have you. I'm going to let you start our program. Oh, really? Marder, this way. I've got to get my wife out of this. Quickly, do. Wait till they start. I'll think of something. Attention, ladies. Ladies, please. Chatter, chatter, chatter. Please. That's better. Now, we'll skip our little homemaker song tonight because we have so many fascinating items. Miss Carteret. Our horticulture expert will favor us with a talk on a great challenge she wishes to bring to the people of the United States. Her subject being, America, grow more higher since. But first, here is our own gardening advisor, Miss Rivette. Bravo! Bravo! Thank you, ladies. Uh, well, I... Uh, uh, believe me, I... I never expected to be called on to give a lecture tonight... On the subject of gardening. Elizabeth. Yes, Mr. Carter. Some of our friends just walked in. Gardening is, um, uh, gardening is very interesting. What do we do? Slap my face. Did you see You heard me. Call me a wolf. Yell your head out. Naturally, the people most interested in gardening are people who, uh, have gardens. <laughs> now, Elizabeth. Why, you fresh? The quiet. Oh, hurry. I was never so insulted in all my life. How dare you think? Well, I, I didn't tell you. Well, it was all a mistake. I'm going to stretch your eyes. Hey, hey, hey. Go in there. Oh. Hey, oh. come on. Hey, don't, don't. Oh, my dear. Catch the exit, Gail. Go on, Elizabeth. Oh. Keep screaming. You've said it a wonderful time. Oh. a milling crowd to an exit door and shook off the men who'd seen us and were fighting their way toward the front. We dashed back to where the car had been parked. Greg told Elizabeth to take the wheel. He wanted to watch any cars that came up behind us. We headed west toward the Henry Hudson Parkway. Go straight west, Elizabeth. You have to cut across Times Square. Next block. All right. Well, late, Mr. Collins. I was supposed to be at the Walnut Inn at 10.30. Just cross your fingers and hope your friend's still there. Go uptown, Elizabeth. No, that's downtown. Go the other way, uptown. Oh, 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 yes, sorry. Now step on it. Those boys catch up with us for dead ducks. They wouldn't shoot in those crowds if it was too risky. But here they'll open up on us. The next thing we'll find out about gardening, maybe when we wake up and find somebody putting dirt in our faces. Not a very pretty speech, but Craig never did mince words when the game was really on. In just a minute, we'll bring you the climax of the case. We were lucky... We weren't followed as we traveled uptown. Evidently, those four men lost us in the panic back at the homemakers' club. We went straight up the Hudson to the Sawmill River. The Walnut Inn wasn't too far. We parked outside. We found a table. You said there'd be a guy here, Elizabeth, singing all that time. Yes, that's right. He's somewhere in this mom. And you'll see my green outfit. Then he'll sing, so we haven't got tired of waiting and gone. It isn't much after 10.30. We ought to drink stall around. I don't know what I'll do if we've missed him. Yeah, but I will leave it. I'm sorry, my son. All right. Stay right, leave my kid. Young fella, have a good time. We don't want no trouble around here. All right, all my colleague, you can't throw me out. Here, bounce this guy out there. Stay for a good time, Mr. Go on, let's go. Great, listen. He's singing all the things. I told you. Come on, out to the door with you. Come on, come on. Now, man. We must have put on that drunk act so we could get away with the singing, Gail. Come on, let's go outside. We'll probably be waiting for it. I was afraid we'd missed you. Who are those two? 
They helped me. I had some trouble. What's your name? Elizabeth Pearson. Yeah. That's the name they told me. I wanted to be sure. You positive about this fella and the girl? My name is Collins, Gregory Collins. This is my wife. Hello. Got the money, Elizabeth? Here in my pocketbook. Oh, wait, what's your name? James Ferguson. Right. There it is, Jim. Hundred and fifty thousand. You did a nice job, Elizabeth. Thanks. I don't think she did such a nice job. What do you mean? I mean she made a lot of mistakes. Greg, what are you talking about? Elizabeth gave us a lot of bourgeois, honey. About helping children in Europe. Sounded very inspiring. But it was actually all applesauce. Why, it's all right, you... baby. He isn't going to do much more talking. I got a 38 here. Elizabeth, you told me the money was taken out of the bank this morning. Today is Sunday. <gasps> then you told us you lived in New York all your life. But when you were at the wheel in Times Square, you didn't know which way was uptown. Go on, Jim, shoot. Wait on, Elizabeth. You've been smuggling to the European black market, all right, but just to fatten your own bankrolls. You heard what Elizabeth said. We have to get out of here, Collins. Yeah. You do have to go, don't you? Four men have been chasing Elizabeth all night. She told us they were gangsters. I don't think they were, though. Five will get you ten, they were FBI. That's right, Greg. They could have shot at us half a dozen times, but they didn't. Gangsters would have taken a chance and hit anybody at all in those crowds. FBI men would be more careful. Tell them, Jim, go on. What are you waiting for, Jim? Shoot them before they spill everything to the cops. Okay. I'll... Now, wait a minute, Jim. Shut up, Collins. How do you know we talked to the police? Don't listen to him, Jim. You have 150000 Jim. For a very small piece of that... Greg, you... Open. I said for a very small piece of that, my wife and I would shut up like clams. That way, everybody wins. Think about it, Jim. Maybe he's right, Elizabeth. I'm not sure I want a murder rap following me around. You yellow tramp. Go on and use that gun or give it to me. Come I'll... on, Jim. Let's go back inside and talk this over. We'll make a deal. I was a bright enough little boy to help Elizabeth get here. Now, why do you think I did that? Maybe I can help you get out of the state. Lots of men are looking for you. She could use, huh? That adds up, Elizabeth. I don't think so. He's going to try something. What can he try? I got the gun. We'll go back into the inn. You shell out a few bills, and you're sure my wife and I won't shoot our mouths off. We'll work up a plan. We'll dream up something so she can get away. They'll be watching the highways, the bridges, the tunnels. You'll need ideas. All right. We'll talk it over. But remember, you start playing games. And I start shooting. Mind if we all have a drink, Jim? Go ahead. Jim, he's purposely stalling. These dicks will catch up with us. How much dough did you have in mind, Colin? Five thousand. Won't hurt. You have a hundred and fifty. I have a car, Jim. You'll need it. It all goes into the bargain. Okay. We'll say five G's. That's it. It's turning out to be a very friendly deal, isn't it? You mind if I have a cigarette? No cigarettes. Keep your hands out of your coat pockets. All right. Well, let's have the money. Give me five G's from that stack you've got, Elizabeth. Well, okay. I suppose you know best. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Well, hand it over. Here you are. Let go of my hand, you... I'll fix him. No, you won't. Why, you... No, you... I want that gun, Jim. And there's only one way to get it. Like this. He's out, Greg. Out cold. Yeah. Don't let his girlfriend get away, Gail. I got it. Let me go, you... You... Better? Stay right there, Elizabeth. The police should be along any minute from now. Greg and I turned Elizabeth and Jim in. We stood outdoors in the country under a very romantic-looking sky. And what are you looking so thoughtful about, Jim? Greg, I was just wondering, when Elizabeth ran up to you and made you kiss her, did you... Did I what? Tell the truth now. I will. Swear? 
I swear. Did you like it when you kissed her, Greg? Well, I'd... I'd say... Yes? It was a... Not much. After all, I've kissed hundreds of girls. You what? I mean, it... I mean, Don't lie to me, Greg Collins. How'd you like kissing her compared to kissing me? Oh, well, it's... it's it, uh, you can't compare them. It's two different things. Like, um... Like, like, like eating home and eating out. It is, huh? Oh, come here, Greg. Why? I'll show you. There's nothing like home cooking. Footnote to the story. Since we weren't very far away, Greg and I drove to Playland at Dry Beach. It's just like Coney Island. We took 16 rides. Once on the roller coaster and uh, 15 times through the tunnel of love. Don't go away. In just a moment, we'll be back with you. Well, folks, Gail and I hope you enjoyed our adventure, Death War Green. Be sure to visit us next time for another puzzle in murder. For where there is crime and romance, there you'll find... Mr. And Mrs. Collins. Welcome back. Well, I know Mrs. Collins is supposed to be portrayed as overly jealous, but I do think that in her defense that her husband does end up kissing a beautiful woman in the line of duty at a rate that's high normal than uh, for any normal uh, private investigator. Overall, the case was interesting. There were some great twists, some nice action. I did think the clue about the uh, the perpetrator claiming that uh, she'd gotten the money out of the bank today is just a bit silly and obvious because of the Sunday thing. All right, well, uh, listener comments and feedback now. Lisa writes... Uh, regarding the uh, episode, of, I think it was the second episode of the series, uh, writes, I didn't know mail was delivered twice a day. Fun fact, I looked it up and the USPS stopped delivering twice a day to residences in 1950. Thanks so much for writing in. And Jennifer says, I sure am disliking this series. How many episodes are there? Uh, well, Jennifer, sorry you're not liking the series. Uh, in answer to your question, there are a total of 24 episodes circulating. So we do have a few months uh, yet. Uh, thanks so much for the question, Jennifer. All right. Uh, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Philip supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month uh, and has been one of our Patreon supporters since October 2015. Well, that will do it for now. Uh, join us back here tomorrow for Rocky Jordan, and next week uh, we will be on uh, vacation. Uh, but uh, be sure and listen to a best-of episode from uh, the series uh, 10 Years Run, and then we'll be back again in two weeks. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter or Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>